Hey everybody, it is Justin, your guide into the Forgotten Runiverse, and the big question on everybody's mind is, when Runiverse? Uh, and we did just get an update from the Forgotten Runiverse game page, and we will break that down, especially as we are going into Q3. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff inside of here, we'll break it all down for you. But after the Runiverse game, if you guys are making your lore... Elf just made a massive thread on magic and how to integrate that into your wizard lore as well. But, you know, again, just really cool world building aspects in the back. But again, I will kind of go over the magic updated page in the Forgotten Runes wiki page as well. But let's start out with the Runiverse. That's what everybody is. Uh, minds are at. So we set out in 2024 with a plan to deliver four new special event builds with one dropping at the end of each quarter of the year so as q2 winds down here's uh let's dive into what's changed and why so tldr so if, if you guys just want to end the video now <laughs> oh, please don't please like and subscribe before you do that but the universe is about to get a big upgrade and you'll be able to you'll be playing early in quarter three so what's changed let's kind of see what is with the delay so we've been working hard to secure a partnership that will be transformative to the release and success of Forgotten Runiverse. This has made us hold back on publishing a build until we all manage to sign on the dotted line, which has now been done. So our Q1 event and new foundations has been finished for months, and we saw great feedback about its new features in our closed playtest this March. So as in our Q2 build, Echoes of the Past is wrapping up development and is in the QA process, so quality assurance process. So Echoes of the Past, New Foundations, interesting. So as part of our partnership, we're adding a, a, new uh, a few new features that will improve your on-chain experience and have decided to combine both Q1 and Q2 builds along with those new features into a single, much richer experience. So we're getting the new foundations and echoes of the past um, into one build. And again, the new foundations build, that was pretty, uh, that was that looked pretty hot. Um, and then we don't know it's in echoes of the past. So that's very interesting as well. I suspect that's dungeons uh, based off of this, uh, this image here. So um, y'all have house building a proper journal and quest system, improved chat, Access to dungeons, okay, okay, well, speculation is now conf confirmation here, uh, and new interior decoration systems along with new spells, regions, items, and enemies. So, when we're nailing down launch dates and are aligning and messaging with the new features, but we'll be announcing all of our plans and partnerships next month. And you'll be able to explore the universe again in quarter three. So quarter three is literally just around the corner. I mean, July technically is quarter three. <laughs> but uh, when in quarter three, we don't know. So again, just to kind of recap, um, it should include things from new foundations and the next build, Echoes of the Past. So that's very exciting. Um, and then with regards to the partnerships, I wonder... I wonder what that partnership could be. Does anyone have any guesses? I'll put that in the comments below. So again, that's what's going on with the Runiverse. But games aside, if you guys are also building your lore, I know Elf made a very, very comprehensive thread on magic within the Forgotten Runes Wizard Cult. And he did link the updated wiki page on magic, which has a ton of on the arcane arts especially if you like your wizard and you like to build a DD style in the book of lore kind of goes over things like rune magic planetary stuff um you know elemental runes alchemical runes um and miscellaneous and we'll kind of read through the thread and then we'll take a brief look through the the, the wiki too because uh let me scroll down to the fun part uh the fun part was magic specialties i like stuff like that you see magimancers magises uh, charmers and enchanters, sorcerers, summoners, etc., etc. But well, let's just go to the official thread first. So, Elf said, To transcend mastery of any given craft is to attain the status of wizard and thus delve into magic, aka the arcane arts, for indeed magic and above all is an art form. So, uh, magic is a very important concept in the Forgotten Ruins cult. Forgotten Runes of Wizard called, right? It is like the beating heart of the of the of the rune, uh, the supercontinent, right? It is uh, everything that we like about the cult magic itself. So, 
Number three, as an art form, systemization is futile. For just as a one school of arcane arts publishes its magic old manifesto, another wizard or magical movement comes along to redefine the boundaries of what magic can be. So, man, these aesthetics are, like, super good for this thread. <laughs> There's an in inherent instability of the arcane arts, and to engage in magic is to willingly court a spectrum of chaos. Um, that said, within the Runiverse, we do observe loose categories of magic as defined by the runes, color, and magical specialty, right? So this may pertain to your wizard. Your, your wizard may have a rune, may have a color affinity, and you may want to um, see whether it has a magical specialty, right? So what is special about the wizards of Forgotten Runes is that whether they layer together these different magical ex influences achieve uh, to achieve... Uh, okay, so they basically layer together these magical influences to achieve a unique magical expression, right? So each wizard does magic differently, and you can write that in your lore. So no two wizards practice magic in the same way. Let's examine each of these different magical influences, starting with runes. So number seven, attachment to a rune is not often by choice. For while runes can enhance magic and be considered an asset, they can also be a burden to which a wizard is eternally bound, right? So there are four categories of runes our wizards know. Planetary, elemental, alchemical, and miscellaneous. So again, that is kind of outlined in the wiki uh, kind of up here um, where they kind of show off the runes here and you know what they are kind of about, right? So if you have a rune of earth, earth is the foundation of which life is built. This rune confers stability, fertility, physicality, and healing to spell. So again, the wiki is like a really good um, you know place to kind of see that. So planetary runes. Eight runes representing the planets in our solar systems, each with a unique influence based on a cl and classical interpretations of these heavenly bodies, right? So, yeah, that's pretty dank. <laughs> and then again, again, elemental runes. I think this is pretty uh, elementary. <laughs> there are four runes from the classical elements, earth, air, fire, and water, which are excellent for enhancing spells and rituals. That's very interesting because my wizard has a rune of water, so... Um, I will have to think about that. I'll have to think about that. Damn, that's pretty hot. Okay, and then alchemical runes. So often considered the most practical of the runes, they offer influence in both the spiritual and physical worlds. Al alchemy runes offer a path to solve et coagula. Oh, God, I totally butchered that. <laughs> oh, well. Um, the fundamental concept of taking base materials and assembling them into greatness. Wow. Wow, okay, that's that's some depth right there. I really like how Elf, you know, wrote this out. It's very, it's very, it's, you have a really nice foundation for, like, you know, the, like, the mystique and the aesthetic that you want. And then number 11, miscellaneous runes. So finally... There are many runes which defy categorization, each with unique properties. And I know there's like the rune of Omega, which is kind of wild. <laughs> so again, color magic. So if your wizard has a specific color or you have a specific affinity to color, if you want to write that in your lore, this kind of goes over that as well. So during the final moments of the singularity event, white light was refracted through a chroma crystal and dispersed six bands of color magic, six bands, <laughs> across the lands, Cults of wizards organized around these six colors, plus the elusive white and black. So, again, there are different kinds of colors. Uh, we can kind of go into that. Uh, into, oh, we're just gonna go, what are we going to go into it right now? So, red magic. So, red is all about a cosmopolitan, elite form of magic aimed at gaining material wealth and political influence, right? So, each of these colors has a specific characteristic and behavior. Um, so again, that may, may or may not appeal to you depending on what it is, but it provides you a nice framework for uh, building your character in that regard. So while some red magic practitioners may be considered wealth obsessed, um, they also possess the ability to achieve acts of virtue by leveraging financial might. So red seems to be uh, the degen traders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'll, I'll stop trolling, but let's just kind of go through all of them. So orange magic, used by the rugged brown hats in the farmland. So a practical form of magic used for farming, hunting, and domestic tasks. So unchanged through the ages, orange is a bastion of reliability and loved by a community deeply rooted in the stability of its ancestral customs. Wow. And then yellow magic, right? So a formidable arcane art that bends time itself. Whoa, 
Damn, they're like, uh, <laughs> dang. Okay, wielded by the yellow hats of Chronomancers Riviera, indifferent to the in seeming dangers of distorting time, they harness yellow for the pursuit of eternal youth and endless nocturnal festivities. <laughs> okay. And then green, magic of the natural world, used to speak to animals, grow plants, and harmonize with the, harmonize with the earth itself, representing a symbiotic relationship between the mystical and natural world. So greens have achieved the understanding of the interconnectedness of all living things. So very garden types. Yeah, nice. Uh, that, that <laughs> I like that one. Um, and then also blue, the magic of knowledge and <laughs> intellect, scholarly pursuit, honed by the... The gaseous was I can't say this word. Oh my god, <laughs> wizards of the blue bastion. Um, blue is more closely aligned with science, technology, alchemy than any other color. So, dang. Okay, that reminds me of like a library. And then purple is uh, an enigmatic, boundless, and chaotic form of magic. Purple is the most uncontrollable color known, and the purples wrestle cosmic ent energies with tenuous grip and is notorious for its psychological toll, often blurring the lines between genius and madness. Wow. So there's a lot. Of, so I, I already went through like purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So those are the pretty, those are like the standard ones, right? And then we're going to, we're going to go into white magic and black magic pretty soon here. So again, whatever like characteristic that, you know, you like to practice inside of your lore, um, this provides a really nice framework for that, right? And then additionally, we're going to go into white magic. So Sublime in essence, white is the zenith of order and clarity, embodying the serene principles of the esoteric aesthetic. Um, a convergence of all hues distilled into a blinding white void. White is a silent force of order in the, cosmi uh, the chaotic cosmos. Wow. And then we also have black magic. So sprawling infinitely across the cosmos, tiny glimmers of light twinkle here and there, but the total void swallows all. The most powerful form of magic, all light yields to it. A forbidden art due to the, the total loss of identity by those who seek to wield it. Wow. So ma uh, massive power comes at a uh, high, in, uh, like massive cost. Uh, dang, Elf. You, of course. Of course. Dang. Wow. So we have our hierarchies of magic. We also have our characteristics of them. So that's really interesting to kind of see it all defined here. And then also we have magical specialties, right? How how much of this thread do we actually have? We have a big thread here. Oh my god, it got it got absorbed by the quantum void. <laughs> okay, not too not too much farther, guys. So the arcane arts extend beyond the influence of runes and color. Many wizards elect to delve deeply into specific facets of magic, adopting titles that reflect their chosen specialization. So we'll kind of go over this in the wiki in just a moment here, but uh, pyromancers, maguses, uh, magus, magus, I, I can't say this, uh, charmer, shaman, mystic, alchemist, etc., etc. Who the hell made these like uh, like <laughs> webhams or gifs? Uh, these are uh, insanely aesthetic. And then the summary of the arcane arts is still but a fraction of the magical expression seen in the universe. As stated earlier, each wizard approaches their art in unique ways, most of whom do not use any of the above influences at all. And then we also have Abracadabra here. <laughs> I think I, I think it says I... Okay, I'm not going to go into that. But what are some other ways that you, wizard, practice the arcane arts? Let me know in the comments below. So, again, this a lot of this... A lot of this... All of it is in the new wiki page that was updated by Elf. He's been working on this for a very long time, I assume. Um, and it kind of goes over everything in detail, you know, magic, everything that we just kind of expressed here. Um, but what I really enjoy is actually the definitions in like the, the runes, right? The planetary runes, um, the different kinds of, you know, you know, from Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, right? Why don't we just talk about Jupiter, right? From the rulers of the gods himself, Jupiter, a rune of growth, prosperity and wisdom the influence of this rune can enhance learning and wealth accumulation so again if you have a, a, any specific permutation of runes colors um you know anything on your wizard that you know helps you build a framework for you know writing your story um you should take advantage of it i, I definitely would recommend um you know putting some uh, putting some meat in the bone with regards to the book of lore because that will probably be important so 
I like the I like the classical elements as well, like Rune of Earth, Air, Water, and Fire. Right, it kind of has specific characteristics, gives you a flavor, and then the alchemical runes as well. I think there was one. Okay, these one the alchemical ones are the most practical of runes, um, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, and then we also have like miscellaneous runes. Um, I know there was one of <laughs> up only. Um, so this is increasing the powers of spells, abilities, and added any additive function. And then if down only was to decrease this power of spells. So basically you can make, if your wizard has a rune of up only, you could make a really OP wizard. Or if you have a rune of down only, you could, you know, have a debuff wizard that casts debuff spells or something like that. But these are just ideas I'm just throwing out, guys. You know, of course, use these to your discretion. And then they kind of, and then, you know, he wrote down, uh, I think Elf wrote down, you know, descriptions for color magic spectrums. We kind of already went over these. Um, but I really, really like the section on magical specialties, right? Um, because these are more kind of like, you know, if you're a magimancer, um, if you're like, you know, charmer and enchanter, summoner, these are more traditional types that, um, you know, fit within that standard like fantasy category, like battle mages. You know, battle mages are trained for combat, specializing in martial prowess with potent magic, right? They're experts in using spells to enhance their physical abilities, protect allies or devastate enemies on the battlefield. Um, and again, yeah, man, I got to read through this. Like, I know there's a lot, there's a lot of stuff, right? Because, um, you know, I, I like going off of the, I like going off of like a basic framework for, you know, inspiration for my wizard, right? Because I'm still in the process of making my lore, of course. And, you know, there's always updates with the, you know, the map itself. I know a couple of, uh, I know a couple of community members submitted uh, their, like their names for new places on the map. Um, so I know, I, I know there was one for the Emerald Forest, so that was really cool. Um, but again, you know, there, there's just a huge framework of being able to write down anything that you want in the Book of Lore and relate it to, you know, what Elf wrote down here, right? So m magic is a meta concept. So again, um, you don't have to use this framework. It is just for your inspiration. And, you know, I really like having that. So again, I just kind of wanted to go go over this humongous thread uh, that probably took a, long, a lot of work. Um, and I really, really appreciate that because what's a good world without lore? <laughs> but again, I just kind of want to recap at the very end. If you guys are looking for the Forgotten Runiverse, um, I know this was a little bit of a longer video. Uh, we'll be able to play in early Q3 with a better and bigger build. So that's very exciting. And we'll get to see dungeons and, and, and buildings and all that fun stuff. So I'll see you guys in the Runiverse. Smash that like and subscribe button if this was a helpful video for you. I know this is a lot of information. There's a lot of information coming. There's going to be even more in the future. So anyways, you guys know what to do. I'll see you guys in the Runiverse. Peace.